What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, I wanted to introduce you to the new tool that was released in public beta at Basecamp last week for creating your own live components. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you might remember a little while ago, um, back in October of 2020, actually, um, there was a feature post on the SketchUp forum talking about live components. And so live components are basically a tool that's designed to give you more ability to create configurable objects inside of SketchUp. So you might have seen them at the top of the 3D warehouse. Um, whenever you open that up, there's a number of different live components that you can click on and then download into your model. So like, for example, if we were to download, uh, let's say this storefront system, for example, we can click on this button, click on the option for download and configure, and that's going to drop a live component into your model. You can then right click on this and you can configure that live component. And so these are similar to dynamic components in the sense that you can adjust things like your heights, your widths, other things like that. Um, and this is all happening live. So you can adjust things like if you have a door opening in here, you can adjust the opening, the door size, other things like that. And so live components are fairly similar to dynamic components. And I think up until recently, the general feeling about live components has been that they seem like an interesting tool, but nobody really had an idea of how they were authored or created. There was kind of a smaller alpha going on, but I think a lot of us filled out the form and didn't actually get in to actually test out um, creating live components. However, at Basecamp, Trimble announced the public beta of Trimble Creator. And so you can access Trimble Creator by going to creator.trimble.com. So basically what Trimble Creator does is it allows you to use parametric information um, like nodes and connections in order to generate geometry inside of a 3D space. So up above is the 3D space where you can actually see what's being created. Down below is the area where your node tree goes. Now note that there is information on the right hand side of the page. Um, there's a little bit of tutorial information. So it's going to talk you through like how to navigate around, um, what general node interactions will look like, other things like that. And so there's a few different tutorials that you can follow along with over here on the right hand side of the page, right? And so it's going to give you a tutorial right here that you follow along with. And then once you're done with this step, you can just click on the right arrow button to go to the next step. Um, one of the things that's kind of frustrating is if you click on the next arrow button, it always asks you if you want to save your changes, um, which is something that gets a little bit annoying when you're flipping through 10 different steps. But I understand why it's there. This is basically built on top of just a um, just a node setup and it's walking you through the steps. So that may be something that gets changed in the future. So there is also a button on the right hand side of the page for builds and what builds is going to do is it's going to walk you through the creation of some actual complete projects in here. The shade structure is a really good place to start. That's kind of where they started at Basecamp itself. My hope is that we're going to see additional tutorials uploaded in here um, on the right hand side of the page um, as we move on. So there's more examples of what exactly Trimble Creator can do. So you can by going over the graph browser, search through different live components that have been created. So for for example, if I search for canopy, um, anything in here that's been created as a canopy will show up in this list. So for example, here's a canopy that Alex Schreier created in Trimble Creator. In addition to being able to download different live components that other people have created, you can also access the parameters over here and you can actually adjust this um, in order to see what the live components are going to do. Now, some of this is going to have to do with the node that you have selected, which we can talk about in a minute. But you can see how there's a lot of really powerful options in here. So being able to create this canopy, for example, is something that definitely has some really cool applications. Um, and then notice how this one, for example, has like randomization options in here as well. So you can use this to randomize um, the kind of canopy that's being created, just as an example. All right, so let's say we wanted to create our own graph in here. What we could do is we could click on this option right here for new graph like this. We're going to do something really simple. We'll take a look at two quick examples. So first off, um, you, really all you do in this upper space, as far as I can tell, is you just fly around and navigate around. So um, you click and drag uh, the middle mouse button in order to pan, um, and then you click and drag the right mouse button in order to move around. I kind of wish the control scheme was similar to SketchUp in the sense that I wish it would orbit when I click and drag, um, but instead it, you or when I uh, click and drag the middle mouse button. So it's a little different than SketchUp, which I wish would change, but that's okay. And so up here, you just kind of view, down here is where you create your nodes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna start by clicking the option for create 
a node. And notice how I can either search for a node or I can click on this button right here um, in order to find all of the different options that are in here. And um, notice that, um, at least in my opinion, it seems like uh, there's a lot more options in here than you would have had with dynamic components. But let's say we wanted to create something simple like a box. So I'm just going to create a mesh box right here. Well, notice when I create the mesh box, that box is going to show up inside of my 3D viewport, right? So I can actually see what's being created. Notice how if I mouse over this, there's some little dots that I can click on in order to adjust things about this. So in this situation, for example, I can set um, the type, the center, which is going to be the location. I can also set the scale. So if I wanted this box to be bigger, I can set this to be a two by two by two or something like that. Um, and notice how those changes are going to adjust inside of your 3D viewport. Now, let's say that I wanted to make this adjust a little bit. Well, what I can do is I can click and drag off of this box right here um, in order to add a path. Notice I'm clicking and dragging at the bottom of the box right here at the moment. And what I wanna do is I wanna click in here and I wanna add a value for a transform. And we're gonna set a smart size transform. So we've got our box. And then we've created a node, node transition to this smart size transform right here. Well, notice how if I was to click in here, the smart size transform is going to give me the ability to adjust some things. So for example, the intended size along this axis. So let's say that I wanted this to be scaled along the X axis. Well, what I could do is I could type in a value of 3000 right here. And notice how nothing changed up above. Now, the reason nothing changed up above is because when you click on a node, you're going to be able to see the operations up to the point in that node. So the smart size is actually being applied over here to the right hand side of this object right here. So if I click on this box, notice how I'm not going to see it until I click over here. Now, this is interesting, but not especially helpful, right? Because if I click in here, there's no parameter that I can adjust. So this isn't like a live component. It's just something where I'm manually editing it down below. All right. And so in this case, what I need to do is I need to click and drag off of the size value right here. And I want to click and drag and I want to add a parameter. So in this case, we're just actually going to come in here. We're going to select the value for parameter. We're going to select a number. And then we're going to drag a connection from this dot right here into the size value right here. We've got this number in here, and this number is going to set the size of our box. But notice how it doesn't show up in our parameters list over here on the left-hand side of the page. What we need to do is just right-click and select the option for parameter. Now it's a parameter, and that means that if I click in here, I can adjust the size of my object using this number right here. And so this is a really simple example, and I don't want to get any, into anything too complex just yet, A, because I'm still learning this, but B, because I'm just trying to give you an idea what this can do. So let's create one other graph really quick. All right, so the other thing I want to do is I want to show you how to switch between different options using Trimble Creator. So I was going to use a couple wall files for SketchUp because you're supposed to be able to drag in actual model files down here. It's not working for me for whatever reason. I'm not sure if that's a limitation on my end or if this isn't liking the SketchUp files or what the deal is there. So we'll just use primitive shapes. And so what I want to do is I want to create a node down below and uh, we'll just create a box right here. So a simple box. And then we'll also create a node for a cylinder. So if we go into geometry, create cylinder right here. So we've got two different shapes, right? Occupying the same space. Notice how if I click on one of them or the other one, I can see the geometry that's in there. If I do a shift click, I can see both. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna have the option to switch between them. So I'm gonna create a switch node right here. And we're just going to drag both of these objects into the switch node, right? And so what the switch node is going to do is it's going to switch between something based on a value of zero or one, right? But um, all we have right now is just nothing actually going into that. So what we wanna do is we wanna click and drag a node out of here and we wanna set a parameter. We wanna set a choice. All right, so we've got a parameter right here that's going to give us a choice. This is going to let us do a comma separated list of choice options. So in this case, I'm going to let this do a zero and a one as my two choices right here. But notice how that still doesn't show up in my parameters. That's because I need to right click on this object and make it a parameter. So now I have a choice between zero 
and one. And basically what that's going to do is that's just going to um, let me choose between two different options. And so let's say that we had a third option. So let's add a sphere right here. We're also going to drag this in here. Now, I can have options for zero, one, and two and place this in here. So now if I click on my switch, click the drop down, notice how I've got options for zero, one, and two, like this. And so I can switch between those. And so that's just generally the way this is set up so that you can create things inside of Tremble Creator. And then once you're done, if you wanted to save this, you could click on it right here and call this choices and click on the option for save. And then you'll be able to access that later you can also, if you want to, click on the option for open in SketchUp, and that's going to show you what this would look like inside of SketchUp. And if you want to, you can download that as an SKP file. And then you can open that SKP file or import. So we can do a file import. That option right here, and that's a live component that you can right click on and you can configure as a live component. So notice that choice. Is going to show up right here. Obviously, there's some things that would have to do with the placement, which we're not worrying too much about for right now. Okay, so a few thoughts about this. First off, um, if you're looking for help with Trimble Creator, there's a tag in the SketchUp community for live components in Trimble Creator. So they have some information about um, where you can get help. You can ask your questions. Um, people have been pretty active in here so far, um, as well as you can see some things that some other people are creating. Okay, so my first thought on this and something you should be aware of is when you bring a live component in and you actually wanna configure it, you have to right click on this and do the option for configure live component. What that means is that means that this is going to connect to the Tremble Connect server and all of these changes are happening, happening inside of Tremble Creator outside of SketchUp. This does require an internet connection in order for this to work. I'm not sure how your internet speed affects this. Um, I have faster internet speed than I've had in the past. Um, so I don't know what that does to performance or anything like that, but I'll be interested to see what the reaction is to that. This is not happening directly inside of SketchUp. This is happening externally. I would also like to just see a little bit more tutorial information in here on how to use this. Um, I do think it's super valuable being able to download all of these other um, models that are in here and look at the way that they're created. Um, but I just like to see a little bit more step-by-step -step stuff, knowing that that's probably being created in the background. So we'll definitely be talking about Tremble Creator more in the future, but for now, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about the tool? What do you think about live components? Um, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.